It is Grand Finals times, friend. The CCL Open as we get ready to go for the Vanguard regular season. There's a lot more to come, but for the immediate moment, we consider the present, which is Arizona State coming out of the lower bracket with a chance for revenge against Braves Esports out of Ottawa University. My whole chip with me, McCormick, and I'm not going to lie to you, Mr. Alex. This is a tall ask. To not just beat this Braves Esports team once, but to have to do it twice, it's going to be tall ask for sure. Well, it's a tall ass for a lot of reasons. Number one, nobody has been able to do it yet inside yep. of the last season since CCL, or rather Ottawa, has entered into the CCL. No, that's number one. Number two, the first series that we saw between both of these two teams, albeit it was close, wasn't close enough to, for ASU to even get a map off of Ottawa. So... You can kind of swing this one way, but at the end of the day, it's going to be the same conversation we've been having for the last, I'd say, basically a year now. Who's taking down Ottawa? When is it going to happen? And, you know, maybe it'll come sometime soon, but there is one little bit of sad information that we do have, at least for this match specifically. This could potentially be Noisy's last series. Now, if we go to a second mm. best of five, then, of course, that would be his true last series, but... This has the potential to be Noisy's very last se series in the CCL, not as a Call of Duty player, obviously, but uh, it's uh, it's definitely a, a bit of, a bit of a bittersweet moment because Noisy has been one of those guys who has uh, just been such a joy to watch over the last couple of years. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, I mean, the, the promise that he has, I think, as an individual talent in the Call of Duty scene is limitless. And I think we've definitely learned that over the course of the last calendar year, if not potentially dating back to Modern Warfare, um, when he got his go to kind of play in the challenger scene at a more regular basis and at a high level throughout the entirety of the year. But outside of the individual presence of Noisy, this entire Ottawa team, you could say similar things about. Sure. You, you've got a lot of players that were very good on the Modern Warfare engine, now back and playing together for the second straight year. So it, it's tall. I think when you talk about just the roster or side to side uh, the thing about it is when you want to beat this Braves team you have to do it as a group of four you have to be playing near flawless and sure you know it's one of those things that you can't expect anyone to be doing that at this point but we've already mentioned a handful of great moments for Arizona State if they can continue to find those here again there is a chance to maybe convert on maybe some of the small missed opportunities they had in that first series versus Braves esports team like you mentioned it was a 0-3 tally but all three maps are really close just have to wait and see what happens. Fishity will go ahead and pick up two. Tries to go back over towards the point. We'll pick up Ethan in the process. So that's going to be a nice little streak that Fishity is able to go on. Three in a row is going to be enough to allow Arizona State to at least stop the bleeding that Braves Esports were putting on the board for the first hard point. The rotation up in towards the north portion of the map. Player number two in Good. fame is going to lose the gunfight there against Fishity. So that is going to allow them to hold down P2. And Shift, we talked about it a little bit earlier in the series beforehand. I mentioned the one before that Fame had yesterday, but I, I mean, simply stated, there's not many people that can touch Fame on the Modern Warfare. No. And we saw that back when Modern Warfare was the name of the game, finished top six at Challengers Finals and averaged a very high average placement of right around eight throughout the year, throughout Challengers. Unbelievable talent. Kind of, I, I won't say he fell off in Cold War, but definitely did not find the teammates that... <laughs> would allow him to find the same success throughout the Cold War season. So hoping for a reprisal. Also part of that conversation, Ethan Tunai, as E2N as labeled here, he was also very good during that Modern Warfare year and fell off maybe just a touch from that same level of success as we transitioned into Cold War. But all of the history aside, we're through two hard points, and we've got ourselves a very tight game. And the new kids on the block, and Fishity, I think, being one of the main subjects of that uh, that that particular narrative, he's had a great start once again. Nine and four, top kill death ratio in the lobby at the moment. Getting towards the bottom of the building, yeah. Gravity looking over towards the top, and I mean, this has just been great zoning from Arizona State so far. They've been yeah. able to kind of control the map in the way that they've wanted it to. And again, we talked about how heavy, heavily contested those first two hard points are going to go. It's just going to be back and forth. Maybe you're going to get 15 to 20 seconds of time if you're lucky with the amount of contests that are going to come through. But and now you're starting to get in towards the part of the map where okay, this is that, that first hill that you can kind of turn into a money hill if you're able to hold it down correctly. But it, once we get the, across the next rotation into point number four, that's when things really start to come to life and you're going to see teams maybe be able to take that leap forward so as fishity finds yet another three piece sprack will find one as well and as fishity is on four in a row going to be looking for the first glide bomb of the game to allow arizona state to have utility in the back pocket 
I like what I just saw right there from the Sun Devils. It's a full four-man break, but as soon as the kills start to come out, two players just run through barn and make through, or make, pardon me, run through house and get their way through the middle of the map and start to challenge the back spawns for barn. It actually puts the Braves eSports squad on their heels for a second where no one could even recontest the back 20 seconds. So I like that. It's Arizona State, again, controlling tempo in a small moment, but it's one that allows them a chance to soak up free time and still threaten this backside setup that the Braves are currently enjoying, but only for maybe a small time. Noisy up top is not a part of this. Three different members down low of the Sun Devils, but ah, beautiful predictions. Noisy looking for the third <laughs> double beat down on the Fishity. What a play from Tyler Bailey. Oh, there's one guy that's going to be able to do it big every game. It's going to be Tyler. As he's going to be on five in a row, that's going to be a glide bomb now for the Braves eSports roster. Trying to dip around the corner to the right side. Going to be able to no! find one now, make it two again. Seven in a row, one kill off of full streaks. And, well, that could have been the final dagger. But Sprack will go ahead and knock Noisy off of the tasty streak that he was enjoying himself. Brave eSports, well, off the backhand of Noisy's big streak. They go ahead and get the last bit of that time inside of the last point. And now as we go over towards point number five in that lower ditch area, Arizona State have that first rotation with the ability for Braves eSports sports use streaks on a tank this is the thing that everybody has problems with when it comes to playing ottawa arizona state is playing in your flawless game so far through the first three hills and then all of a sudden tyler says hold my apple juice it's just <laughs> there's it's so difficult to account for all the different things that can happen when you play up against ottawa when you've got four unbelievable players that Every single one of them can pop off. Even Fame was close, if not at the margin of streaks as well. Now, again, recovery for Arizona State has been near flawless. They sure. get in the river. They're holding this from the front, mind you, and they were able to soak up the better part of the first 40 seconds, and the fight's not even done yet as they find a kill on the noisy. And they're going to be able to get the last 15 seconds of time, too. Fishity will jump down another four streak here from Fishity, looking for the glide bomb once again. Noisy will slide around the right side corner. Fishity, the shots were there, but not enough to get the kill. Noisy and Ethan will pair for two. We'll find ourselves back to point number one in a very contest-heavy portion of the map, directly in the middle, where there's so many lanes and angles to be taken down from. Who will be the first to budge onto the point? Well, that's going to be Arizona State, as Gravity and Sprack will go ahead and pair for two. You look to Noisy, who once again is trying to get Mixy in the action, and he finds his demise due to the hands of Gravity. Uh, nice try there from Gravity to try to lock up a double as the Braves were trying to make their way around the back to flip the spawns, and they're successful in that feat. But still, challenges remain as Arizona State control the high ground. Fishity being the main culprit of that. Gets to a spot on top of the hay bales. Turns his attention. Finds E2 and one more down low. Not going to get the better of Fame there from his high-low play. But Fame tagged down low. Easy trade. And with 20 seconds remaining, sure, you've got an opportunity here for the Braves to maybe soak up more time. But the big thing is the map has flipped on its head. And it's Arizona State who find themselves on the favorite side for now. Trying to scurry. Trying to mangle your way across the map. Right now you look to Fishity, who's going to get another kill towards the middle of the map. Wow. Needs to reload, actually just going to pull out the knife and try to just run around. Spots out Noisy, going to be able to get the shots in the back. Noisy, no. though, going to be able to turn around and sure you can call that out to not having <laughs> enough bullets in the mag for the gel. But either way, Noisy's going to be feeling good after that one. Being able to turn Whip around and take down <laughs> the hot and streaky Fishity, who has been, again, the, that rock and centerpiece for Arizona State. But as you look on the mini map right now, you see Arizona State are holding down the hill quite nice over towards P2. This is probably the most amount of time that anybody's been able to get off the second point so far here throughout the Great. first two rotations. And that's been big for Arizona State because they needed this time to get themselves back to about an even-headed game. Oh, this is just... Man, everyone from Arizona State are playing their roles to perfection. Uh, you've got these MP40s that are flying around the map. You gotta keep in mind, there's no STGs in the map as well. That's another thing we didn't really have a lot of time to talk about when it comes to maps like Bocage, where it is so scrappy. You typically see a 2-2 where you've got two MP40s, two automatons, or a 3-1, which is what Arizona State is currently running by mm -hmm. at least what I've been able to figure. And that has helped them keep pace and keep tempo. You don't have to worry about an STG playing anchor. You just kind of run and just zone and swarm around hard points with all of these SMGs. Sprack now trying to exercise that exact sentiment, but is taken down. Even trades come out, and it's now on to Fishity, and with the Automaton, he can challenge close quarters, and here he goes. 
Down the staircase, Fishity, back in last year for the Black Ops Cold War season, was always running around with the FFAR, a very comparable gun to how fast the FFAR shot, and also the recoil control that you're needing to have to control that weapon, although there's not much recoil to it at the end of the That's day fair. if you're able to go ahead and control it to the best of your ability as well. It's going to be an even more effective of a weapon. However, a four-man push to the front door. Yeah. Three are going to go down. All four are going to go down here for the Braves Esports roster. In Arizona State, they'll maintain the last 15 seconds of time, and although the Braves Esports roster will be across the map. It's still going to be Arizona State who have maintained themselves not only a nice lead, but built themselves a comfortable cushion. And I love this too. You want to co compare and contrast how Arizona State, last time we talked about this rotation, they full hit from the favorite spawns on P2 inside the bottom house and then ran through to threaten the top side of Barn. This time, because of how cleanly they won it, they just say, let's give up the back 10 seconds, play for the initial setup, and maybe even force Ottawa to start using some of their streaks. Fishity up top, good for two, but nothing more. Then beyond that, Ottawa, the whole play was around the back. So we've been crediting Arizona State for trying to do a nice job of zoning out some of this hard point, but maybe the scare of the streaks that Noisier is still holding on to has kept them bunkered up, and with that, Ottawa have flipped the spawns around and now have a really good chance with numbers to hold on to this back 25 seconds. Oh, noisy, shifty, gets around to the back of Effectini there, looks for the second no. one as well, was almost able to whip on the Fishity, and that's just the, the ability not only to snap, but aim perfect from Noisy that has consistently kept him at the top of his game, not only inside of the CCL, but throughout the entirety of the challenger scene and why he is revered as one of the best SMG players, one of the most cracked out SMG players inside of the entire game of Call of Duty. Either way though, Braves Esports, they're still down by three points. Arizona State though, they don't have the rotations. They're gonna have to get in towards this point. The last time they were able to hold, able to hold it down quite well and the kills that they're going to be able to get here in through the front are going to be just enough. And there comes the streak to get Noisy at the same time. However, Noisy is gonna go ahead and invest the streak at the same time. It doesn't come or amount to anything. And Arizona State will continue to hold down this time for another potential 40 seconds. Huge play from Gravity. For a moment, it looked like the timing was going to be advent or disadvantageous for him as he was caught between a couple of Braves members, but he reads the cross, gets around the back, and stalls out the spawns for Ottawa for long enough for Arizona State to once again put themselves in a favorable spot on the scoreboard. But with the rebreak, the favorite spawns always being there for Ottawa, they have a chance to retake the lead here with the what looks to be very secure and safe back 15 seconds of the River Hill. We drill back over into the middle of the map. And really, you're looking at this kind of push from Arizona State through the middle towards both the top barn and house area simultaneously. But Noise has been allowed to kind of free roam on the back side of the river hut. And that's going to be good enough to set up a bit of a staging area here for the Braves to actually get an angle at this hard point. But up top, finally, the high ground comes into play and we get stalled out at a 200 to 192 game as Arizona State get a four man feed. Tons of time in middle map. If you can keep the first couple of players out just for the time, maybe you can go ahead and extend your lead to about 10 seconds, and that's exactly what they'll try to do. The left side spawns for the Braves Esports roster, now starting to push back up. They're into the P4 building, trying to get back out into middle map, up and towards the top. Effectini, the pre-aim will go ahead and pay out in space. Oh, Second player around the corner. That's just great movement that allows you to come away with the kill. But with 20 seconds left here, now it's the time for the Braves to get their hand and maybe keeping ASU Maroon outside of middle map. 15 seconds left in the rotation over to P2 now on the table trying to serve it up in the best way they possibly can. Lightning's not going to get the best timing effect Tini will find too. The trade's coming through and there goes fame for a big two piece that's going to give the side of Braves a spot. Left to right spawns here. Ottawa with the favored positions for now, but they still have to break through this high ground position over by the barns. E2N looking to clear the low ground first has worked his way right under the side of the field. Long range sees a player deep. That's Arizona State flipping the spawns back around now in their favor. And all at the same time, they have not given up a single second worth of hard point yet. It's 225-209. And all this is very individualistic from the Braves Esports. Will we see them lose one of their first maps in recent memory? It sure is looking that way. Arizona State still locking things down, but another hit comes through. An unfortunate team made from Lightning. And with that, Gravity and Fishity clean up the rest of the Braves, spawning way too far away. The only player that may be able to touch his fame he finds one elimination. Can he still slide into contestant time? He will, but the counter will be there, and it will be the Sun Devils who strike first in this grand finals. A tight one, but it's Arizona State up 1-0.
the entirety of that game came down, again, you, you kind of just laid it out at the very beginning of the game. You said you're gonna have to play perfect four-man together Call of Duty if you want to beat the side of Ottawa in any of the matchups you're playing, specifically in Hardpoint, and they do just that. Fishity, 43 and 26 there for the first map. The highest streak he had was a couple of kills. He got a glide bomb here and there. And Alan, that right there is what we wanted to see throughout the entirety of the CCL season last year. You don't, you, you're not rooting on a team's <laughs> downfall by any means, but at the same time, you want to see a team come in and be able to take a map, maybe even two or three, off of one of the teams that we consider the most dominant or the most dominant team that we have in the CCL, besides maybe their sister team from last season. I was just about to say, I don't know if any other school was able to take a map off of this Braves team <laughs> last year. <laughs> yeah, it was their own school who was able to kind of give them a little bit of a roughing up every now and again. But wow, unbelievable stuff from Arizona State. It's just the night and day difference from this team back around the end of the season last yeah. year to where they are now is it's unbelievable. It, it, it truly is. <laughs> Shout out to Jeremy Godfather. But we take a look at the map series set here to what we have in front of us for this first best of five. And we say that with a lot of emphasis because if Arizona State can continue on their winning ways, we will send it back to the veto process for a second best of five. Looking to try to send this one off to a favorable start for the Sun Devils. We've got ourselves Tuscan for both the search and destroy and the map three hard point. Berlin would be there for map number four. And then again, Bacage to kind of wrap things up if we get all the way to five. Uh, we've already kind of talked about you know the Tuscan search and destroy um you know from the last series watching sure. the lower finals in which we watched the first four rounds and it was St. Edwards who started off hot but Arizona State had a really solid handle on the map here McCormiel and they were adjusting beautifully they did and the biggest thing that I saw throughout the entirety of that game number one came down to the breaks that they were making but some of the reads that they had as a team knowing where the other team was spawning where they were going to come from on a map like Bokits it's very hard to do simply because of how chaotic the spawns can be at times with how close in the corridors that you have to, uh, for a lot of those engagements on that map specifically mm. but I mean Alan there were so many times where we saw big two three pieces that allowed them not only to get map control but uh, again we talked about in, in the series that they played against St. Edwards, that P4, or rather, that P, yeah, the P4 area down below in that little lake area, that was their bread and butter that they're able yeah, to wrap so real. much time on. Same thing happens there once again. They're able to hold 40 seconds pretty much both times that they were there, getting a couple scrap times in towards middle map and into P2, specifically that rotation at the very end of the game to give them the win. There's so many highlights that you can take from Arizona State in that first map. But then again, you got to now kind of draw that back just a little bit. Say, okay, we're going into an S&D where ASU Maroon has looked very strong. But at right. the same time, we know how good Ottawa can be in the S&Ds. And it, it, it sounds like we're just going back to the fact of like, oh my God, Ottawa is just so good. Well, it's the <laughs> fact that we haven't seen anybody be able to take more than one, maybe two maps off of them besides their sister school in the best of five series. So you always have to have in the back of your mind that Ottawa can turn it up at any point, specifically being able to tie things up in an S&D and go one more. Absolutely. The thing is, and it's hard to really kind of build any pretense for this map simply due to the fact that Arizona State came off of a 6-4 win against SEU, but we didn't get a chance to see anything beyond the first four. The only thing we can really take away was St. Edwards came out with a lot of aggression, a lot of forward pressure, both on their attack and on their defense, and there was not a lot of replication of that from Arizona State. They were kind of backing off a little bit too much, um, and it ended up being a punishment to them. But yeah. in round three and four... The Sun Devils came back and won those with some aggression of their own. And it looked like it was like calculated aggression. Like the first two rounds were kind of like throwaway lives. We're just like, let's just figure out exactly how they want to play. We get a read on what's going on with Eons with his sniper rifle. Fishy he takes the 1v1 a couple of different times. But a lot of it was determined by the fact that Arizona State found out exactly where they were finding first blood success. Because St. Mm -hmm. Edwards took the first three first blood engagements, no problem. Then things started to change. The problem here is going up against this Ottawa team that is very well rehearsed in Search and Destroy because of their challenge protégés that they've got, uh, challengers protégés they have kind of built into this roster. Sure. Feeling that team out is not what you want. You want to come in having learned your lesson already from the winner's finals <laughs> and then immediately apply corrections here on the first couple of rounds that we get uh, in the grants. Well, because, like, the thing was, right, I was talking about St. Edwards before, and I'm like, if you want to beat ASU, you're going to have to make adjustments to their adjustments that they make on you. And right. to your point, the exactly, chess game. Yeah. That, that caveat is there for Ottawa because all of the players on that roster know when to make an adjustment, know when to play a bit faster, when to play a bit slower. And every single one of those players, whether it be a 2v3, a 1v odd, any situation where they might be down a man, 
they're easily going to be able to be able to pick off maybe one or two players, Agreed. get you caught out in a bad situation, and that's how they capitalize, that's how they strike, that's how they get back into a match, specifically in search and destroy. So that's what you always have to be careful about. And when you're talking about first bloods on the map, sure, you got Fishity who's going to be rocking the sniper, and you always are going to love to see Fishity with a sniper in his hands because he's disgusting with it. But at the same time, you allow Noisy, you allow anybody else on the roster, maybe even Lightning Fame to get up and aggressive to get up with the <laughs> SMG into a building. That's just a death sentence. That's like sending a BZ yeah. into the front lines. Well, we'll see. Here we go. We're digging on in, and it'll be Ottawa on the attack first. Straight over towards A. Nobody was surprised. Heavy mid-match uh, stack up, though, for Arizona State, including Fishity, who takes a very big, tall challenge up in the clock tower. And he gets clocked himself. Fame doubles down. Doesn't even lose a point of health. And he's also gotten a read that someone's around the back. It's Effectini. No problem. Fame for three. Looking for the ace, and if he were to find it, it would be on to Sprack, who finds himself maybe considering the end of the map. Well, that's how easily the round can turn around. The offensive side, we talked about it beforehand. They get to the A site first, so you get that bomb down. And then on top of Fame being able to take out the sniper who's looking for picks right at the beginning, and then being able to find a two and then a three piece to end the round. You get a 3K, the other player jumps off the map, and that's an easy round win there on the offensive side. Now we'll be able to see what they can do on the defensive side, maybe to prohibit that quick A push, or does the side of ASU maybe try to pull something out of the back pocket and go over towards B first. I'd say that's probably not likely on the deck of cards that they're going to be able to play here, but you never know when they're trying to play an out best of Braves esports roster. What's the call here, though, for Arizona State? Three members stacked over towards A. Last time they were here, Effectini tried to make an aggressive play around the side of the church, and it was punished. This time, though, Sprack has gotten a bit aggressive on the bottom side of the map through the command center. Fame cooked up nade with teammates, and it does pay off. First blood, but the bomb already planted. And with the 1v1 win from Sprack, bottom of the map, Arizona State has actually stretched out this Braves esports team pretty fully, where they're going to have to take a bunch of completely blind 1v1s, and as noisy falls, it all lands on the shoulders of a 2v4 from E2N and Fame. Now just Fame. Oh boy, not again here, McCormick. This would be another 1v4 situation. He's gotten the first. Now looking for more, but the problem is everyone's just running away. Oh, they're running away, but they actually might stack up against one another. Here, you get the first kill. You look over towards the right. Maybe you're able to get the kill in the middle. Map not going to be in enough time. Also, you just get shot in the back. So Arizona State, they recorrect themselves. They get back over towards the A side first. And again, that just goes to show how aggressive you can be on that site. But more importantly, how favorable it is for that offensive mm -hmm. team as you go one for one there and you handshake the site. So it, it, now, Alan, the kind of question is here on the offensive try. Uh, sure, you, you know that Ottawa is probably going to be heading back over towards that A site. What do you do here if you're the side of Arizona State? Well, the answer is quite simple. You would at least seem you'd probably send Fishity over there with a sniper maybe. But uh, again, that's all just kind of left up in the air and uh, kind of to their discretion of what they might, might, might want to do here on the defensive try. Oh, oh, you called it out there beautifully, McCormiel. Fishity finds first blood. It's on the lightning, the bomb carrier. And this was the other thing I was about to say. Between Effectini and uh, Gravity, they have gotten aggressive down the middle of the map. And Effectini just walks up behind E2N. So now another 2v4 situation, and the only kills in the Braves' camp is from this guy on your screen. Fame 6-1. and one. Yeah, he's earned two streaks, and finally Noisy gets on the board, but oh, Fame sneaks away from gravity. Missed opportunity there, and all of a sudden, we go from a 2v4 to a 2v3 with 45 seconds to play. Big kill from Noisy oh, there. Man. Equalizes things in a 2 versus 2, but the bomb is all the way across the map. Fishity still over by the A site. Runs directly over the bomb, now has an MP40 to play around with. Fame going to be hopping up and towards the top of the building. Jumps around the corner, snaps onto Gravity, but Gravity gets the best with a headshot multiplier coming through for the help. Now it's all up to Noisy and one versus two. Going to be able to grab the bomb here, potentially maybe wrap it over to our speed, but I don't think he has enough time, and he's going to play right around the corner to the right. Has to clear. Oh, timing is Gerb. Fishy, where wow. are you going? He was in a perfect spot to watch over this bomb site, and all of a sudden, Noisy's working on a bit of a spree. Three in a row. Did he spot him? And a 1v1. And I don't believe he saw Gravity. But the bigger question, has Gravity seen him? Yes, he has. Oh. <laughs> Maybe a little bit too close for comfort. But Gravity clutches up, killing the last two players. And that gets Arizona State. Again, another little marginal edge as we continue to go all defense. Seems like every time we hop on board with Noisy in a situation like that, Always some theatrics that's almost pulled off, and there's just going to be that one time he does it, and nobody's going to be surprised. 
Yeah. But every time, every time that it almost happens, we're still sitting there like it's about to happen. And it's just one of the most like, <clears throat> I guess, beautifully destructive things that we have inside of this series so far. But either way, <laughs> bomb going to be picked up looking back over towards the A site. No surprise there. Fishity, the sniper over towards the left, going to be looking for that first blood yet again. A nice pick in the second round there. And then, of course, in that next round where they were able to go ahead and put themselves up two to one. Bomb's going to go down. 45 seconds for the Braves retake. The post-plant setup looking nice from the side of ASU. Noisy drops. That's mid-map. Fame trying to come back through. You haul. Oh, he sneaks around. Gets two. <laughs> what? Did Fishing just not see him? Because he walked right through what you would imagine was his line of sight. So now Fame has completely put a foil into this round. Takes down Fishing. He working on another ace. But it's Sprack. Last one left. E2N hopping on the defuse. Sprack. Cannot see it. They line up for just a moment, but E2N is already defused. Timing just a bit off. And Fame's heroics continue to just absolutely amaze. You know, we, we wanted to say, like, oh, yeah, they make the great adjustments. They do this and they do that. And, and yeah, that, that holds true to some extent. But at the same portion of time, you also have to consider that a one-man army can just tear through your roster at any given time. And, well, that's Modern Warfare Engine fame for you right there, showing what he can do in Search and Destroy. But more importantly, I mean, yeah, the adjustments definitely do help. But when you have someone that's 9-3, and three, you have an 0-2 and, and an 0-3 player on your roster, a noisy who's just barely scraping by at 3-3, three and three, uh, it makes it a lot easier on your team to be able to win those rounds. But, I mean, hell, you just have two, maybe even one person yeah. start to step it up besides noisy. Then all of a sudden, you've got yourself back into the game, potentially with an even bigger lead. I mean, he's 10 and 3 through four rounds. <laughs> Says it all. Lightning with the bomb. A is completely vacant. Fishity is mostly watching the passive angle here. Maybe for an exit. Oh, wow. He actually does catch E2N. Diligently holds the cross. But fame, mid map. Make sure there is no response. And we go 2v2. 30 seconds on the clock. Sprack still playing from the B side of the map. And if timing is good, he might just walk up right behind Fame. Sure does. Last player left. Number one. It's going to be Lightning, but Gravity. Wow. It's just two brilliant pieces of timing for Arizona State. And that's a retake that I don't even want to call it a retake because you just find two kills mid-map lingering. The first kill from Sprack definitely was a good bit of timing. However, the exact same time, Gravity had played really slow over towards the A site, almost back in the spawn by the church door, saw the player start to make them march into the church. Great trigger discipline not to actually get the kill initially. Wraps all the way back around, gets behind on the flank, and then can play in a different angle just in case his teammate in middle map dies yeah. out and he has to play a one versus two. That right there was was beautiful from uh, from from Gravity. He made a fantastic play and it rewarded him in flying colors. <laughs> Also, give them a round win to put them up 3-2 to two in the s &D. That was beautiful from ASU Maroon. That is veteranship right there, and I love every second of it. But you want to talk about adjustments, how about this? No one is going to be holding Sprack at bay throughout the bottom of the map. It's a full stack for the Braves defensively over the middle of the map, and Sprack, who's found himself 1v1s every single round, is nowhere near this play. So the retake is coming quickly. Fishity knows he has to try to escape, but is not going to be allowed to fame on his second. Now it's just down to Sprack. Does he hit the same angle he did last round? Not this time. It's going to be up top of the church. The bomb already being defused and noisy. He does not get it off in time. Now it's down oh. to Sprack. Wins a one more. 1v1, but can't get away for a reload. And Lightning saves the round. Ooh, but Sprack gave him a chance. Oh, he gave him a chance. And I don't know if he was using the 24-round the mag to where he had a little bit faster reload and maybe just didn't have as many bullets in the magazine. But my God, that would have been an absolutely incredible round there from Sprack where he able to complete that. Despite the heroics late in the round, it is Ottawa who go ahead and tie things up at three apiece. So at least you can say for the side of ASU that you tried your best. Didn't work out maybe that round on the offensive try, but you can try again a little bit later on. What do you have on the counteraction for the defensive side once again? Because the last time we saw the Braves on the offensive side, you were able to shut them down, but surely they're going to have a different game plan going forward here, and it's all going to come down to the first blood. Fishity continues to bring the sniper rifle towards the outer edges of A. We've seen him when he was playing St. Edwards. He took the scope up top in the church a couple of different times, but fame in that initial 1v1 from round one... <laughs> has maybe just dissuaded that from ever happening again. And as the bomb gets planted, a second kill comes through for the Braves. So at this very critical round number seven, 
It's looking like it's all going to turn up gold. Gravity up top, nowhere to go. And a clean offense for the first time we've really seen from either side. This time, a flawless round from Ottawa. And that right there, that's just great recognition from Ottawa. Being able to know that if Fishity does play out towards that outer A site with the sniper, they can get there a little bit quicker, set up to where they're not going to be in those long sniper lanes. And then they only challenge them a little later in the round when they've already got two picks off the board and pretty much only about 25 seconds left on the clock for a defuse and those kills to come through if they are going to be able to retake from the defensive side. So that was fantastic from Ottawa. They put themselves up 4-3. to three, And another reason why they've been so good in the search and destroys is because of moments just like that. But if you look to fame, well, he's 14-5 and five here in the SNP. Yeah. You got two streaks to work with, and you get the opening shots onto one of the players. Bomb should go down here over towards the A site. Might be able to get him off the bomb, nope. and will that's big because the bomb goes down, and now you have to worry about it in the four versus three. And the thing is, you still have streaks to play with here if you're fame, which is probably not going to be needed in this round. But the thing is, you put yourself on five, and it, it, now you're just looking to say, Lightning, let's get the bomb down as fast as we can. Fame, stay in the back of the map, and let's just use these streaks to put this search and destroy away without much conflict. Uh, it's, you know, th the thing is, and I, <laughs> I'm reading way too much into this for week two of this game, <laughs> but Arizona State had so many cool moments in that, you know, the two rounds we saw them win back-to-back -back versus St. Edwards. I I'm mostly mm -hmm. thinking back to, you know, Efectini and Gravity getting through the middle of the map defensively and kind of being posted up while Fishity watches over the top of them. We haven't seen that at all so far. And, sure. and I think a lot of that is due to the fact that Fame has dominated the middle of the map. This time, not the case, though. So, okay, maybe a chance for a bit of a change here for Arizona State as now the threat of streaks from Fame is also gone. Efectini making sure nobody can push up has been able to make sure a second kill gets tallied. Wow. We hear a glide bomb come in there. Wasn't able to find all that much on the map. One of the things I haven't seen really from the side of either of these teams is a use, or at least a use utility of a smoke grenade to try and get to a site, more so from the side of Ottawa, either through middle map or over towards that A site just to combat and counteract what Fishity has brought to the table with the sniper. On the staircase, though, noise, he's going to be able to find one. It'd be a one versus four to counteract what his teammate did yesterday in fame. And boy, oh boy, would it be an incredible way to end a search and destroy and ice up yourself, potentially the last series of your CCL career. If you were to put just a screenshot on your, on your radar right now, Arizona State is playing very split. I mean, Noisy's got a lot to clear, but if he were to find it, he would get three 1v1v1s. And there's the bomb pickup. Not a lot of time. Has to clear and plant immediately. Here comes the clear. No problem. No time to plant. He's going to have to try to find the kills now. It goes over, finds the second. Ah, man, he gave himself a try and a look at it, but <laughs> Epictini will just run the opposite direction. And that is a moment that I'm telling you, you screenshot that minimap when I was mentioning it. That is a yep. that, that is like famous pictures before disaster type moments <laughs> right there. <laughs> I mean, again, it just comes down to the fact that you just need to be able to watch your trades or at least be in a position to find a trade onto a teammate after somebody is able to find that kill. And especially in a game that has a very quick TTK, if you're playing even the slightest bit further away than you might need to be, it yeah. could completely discombobulate your entire push, but more importantly, the setup that you have when you have that bomb down, but Noisy isn't able to make the heroes come to life. Maybe if he turns around or, uh, you know, Efectini decides so to start pushing right after him, it's going to be big, but there goes Fame with the gravity, or rather the gravity bomb, with the glide bomb over the top. Ethan with the first shots there is going to find the first blood, and that's going to be big because now it's a four versus two. It should look like I, it might be over. I just love the fact that for the first round defensively, it's not nade spam that catches the timing of the bomb plant. It's the guaranteed kill off of the glide bomb. It's the, the patience that comes out is perfectly executed. Fame having a master class search and destroy right now. So 2v4, you have to feel like the defense of Ottawa still have nades to play with, which is something to kind of keep in the back of your mind. And if you're relying on Fishity to hit a snipe, plant, and get away, you're asking a lot, and E2N will not make you ask for long. Now up to Sprack, 1v4. Well, if you can pull this off, be one of the best clutches I'd seen, specifically since Ever. it's 15 seconds <laughs> left. Your enemies are across the map, and you're trying to force a round 11 on a team that's hungry to tie the series up 1-1, one one, and it's just not wow. going to happen. Sprack. You play your life in a corner... 
<laughs> and I get it. Like, you know, you just want to play passively. You're probably going to lose the round. But, like, in, in that situation, you, gotta you probably go literally for have it. nothing like... to lose. Yeah, like, you, you got to play for it. But I, I understand. You just focus on the next map. Save all the heartbreak. Save all the trauma if you really can. And, well, now you can focus on another hard point map where you were able to best the side of the Ottawa Braves in map number one. However, doing that, again, in, in multiple hard points has proven to be pretty much futile against the side of Ottawa. Time after time, will ASU Maroon be able to break the trends? They already broke the trend of being able to steal the map number one from Ottawa, so uh, maybe we'll see that going forward. But an S&D win for Ottawa puts the series at one apiece, and, well, now we have a bit of a talking point because Ottawa is clearly back in the right direction and, of course, back in the series. You gotta go for it! <laughs> what? <laughs> Still hung up on that. Oh, don't worry, I am too. <clears throat> hung up like a bad relationship right there, tell you what. It's Brack we just met. I don't like that. Um, as you mentioned, though, I mean, it, it was a pretty foregone conclusion, but we stay on Tuscan. We'll step away for a break for a moment. We'll come back. We'll revisit the hard point conversations that we learned, not just from map number one, but also watching over the winner's finals between these two squads. And we'll consider the potential implications for map number three as we're deadlocked in the grand finals at a 1-1 one -one tie. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back, everybody. We are we're treated to one heck of a first map as we had a bit of a surprise, a little shake up to the norm here as the status quo was put on edge by Arizona State. 250 209, the first map, and our opening hard point played on Bakaj, but it would be Ottawa. Too much to handle in the search and destroy. Well, fame, too much to handle in the search and destroy. <laughs> Dropped like 17 oh. kills or something. Guy was on a mission and he absolutely took over. So now we. Keep the attention on Tuscan, but we change it back over to hard point for map number three here, McCormiel. And the big status quo was the fact that Fishity was having himself one hell of a time on map number one. And we asked the question, if you were to beat Ottawa, how do you do it? Some of our answers included things like, you got to play perfect hard point. When you've got a performance like that from Fishy, everyone else is running around the map as they were with all the MP40s. They played pretty much near as perfect as you could have asked them to. Yeah, absolutely. And on a map that ensues chaos, that's exactly what you need to do for the side of Arizona State. You make it to where the Braves can't necessarily gauge every move that you're going to make. It's not going to be a calculated play out of them. It's going to force them to kind of scramble around the map a bit. And you sure. can do the exact same thing here on Tuscan as well. And from the very beginning of this map, I don't know if it's just the architecture of the actual map itself, but hard point on this map to me has felt similar in layout to where the hard points are placed around the map to what we saw back on Seaside from Black Ops 4. And it's just given shout. me a really good feeling every time that I've watched this game. And it's probably due to the you know P3 having the uh, the little fountain in the back, but it's still it's very, <laughs> very similar. No, I, I think you've got you, you bring up a very solid point because even the the final hard point over by headquarters at the command center it feels kind of like barrels in a way with you know yeah. two entryways really I mean you've got a downstairs upstairs but you know yeah, I don't know, we'll, we'll reconsider we'll have to let that live in a different time fishy strong start five and oh <laughs> already earning himself a glide bomb but a nade will take care of him earning anything beyond that now comes with that the Braves flooding forward after the first 16 seconds were good for Arizona State the trades turn up in favor of the Braves and that will be good enough to not just match that value but supersede it Pectini tries the hand of the streak. Fishity will go ahead and find yet another kill. So that's going to be four down now. The respawn here from E2N around the corner. Shots are going to be there, but not enough to actually find that kill once again. So as Efectini continuing to look for the streak, Arizona State, they found themselves in the rotation. Lightning trying to make the hero play around the back. The route man can get paid in a lot of situations, and at least for that first kill, will. However, it is going to allow the side of Braves to actually spawn on that right portion of the map. So they technically get the favorable side of things, the side of Arizona State. They'll spawn in middle map, and it's basically going to be church warfare here as you try to fly your way out on towards the point. But right now, it's Braves. Right on into the point, fight themselves into the hill, and with 30 seconds left, now it's going to be up to who gets the scrap time and who wants to rotate out first. Dude, Fisher D is like untradeable, dude. Ten and two, another three spree for him. Stun comes out, noisy and a bit of trouble. And as Fishy tries to make his move to earn streaks, he's denied. So three straight kills for the Braves. That will amount to a full hard point and, more importantly, the full scrap time, allowing a chance for E2 and to make a play across over to Fountain. And he nearly does it all himself. Gets two. Not going to be healthy enough to get the third. So Arizona State, a chance to try to mend their wounds here and hopefully open things up with a favorable look onto Fountain. Fame almost gets a track down on one player up top. 
eventually gets the red dot chase and Evactini, and that will be enough for the Braves to start to stage a bit of a hit here from the bottom side of the map. So much fun to see this long angle, this long lane be used in such an effective oh, way. However, right there, it's not going to amount to anything. Effectini with two, Sprack on a two spree. Everybody from the side of Bay Arizona State has not been able to find their demise just yet. And as Braves look to push back across the map, Ottawa just almost looked discombobulated here on this push. I don't know if it's because ASU Maroon looks so good with the way they're being able to hold this down or if the Braves just haven't been able to get together and make that formulated push. But either way, uh, with 20 seconds left and now on a five spree from Effectini, you've got multiple streaks to work with in the back pocket for Arizona State. As you go to the next hard point, it might not be the most open hard point in the world, but at the same time, you can use that for maybe back over to point one or even finding a couple of players and maybe not all in the rotation. It's just, you know, I, again, it's early. I, I've only seen a handful of break attempts on that hard point, but a lot of the ones that I find that are successful come from the north side of the map because you've got a free entry to just toss stuns over the top of the archways, and they were they were going to connect because there's no trophies. So once you just full flood your stuns, you've got everyone at half health, and, of course, they're going to be concussed, and that's a pretty easy break to contest from there. But... Braves were maybe getting a little bit too cute trying to play around the deep route around the back and they kept spawning away from the hit and that allowed an opportunity for Arizona State to get a lead but <laughs> I'm telling you it's just the individual pop-off potential of this Ottawa squad is so potent and now we're seeing it from noisy five in a row definitely streaks on the table but the biggest thing here is the fact that Ottawa has broken up this hard point and largely just dominated from start to finish inside the church. And I want to kind of touch on that point, like very, very briefly as well. You talk about the in individual ability to pop off at any time. The, the thing about it is like a lot of teams, you'll you'll see like maybe like two or three players who have the ability to pop off at any given time. But with the Braves esports, the fact that it's all four players and you never know which one is going to have that moment is one of the scariest aspects of this roster and what makes them such a wild card every time that you play against them. But I mean, yeah. for ASU, though, at the same time, though, you know exactly what you're going to get from Fishity game in and game out. He's been so consistent, not only today, but throughout the entirety of the tournament. It's throughout the Swiss portion of the bracket. These look so good. He's in such a prime form right now. And it's just such a nice welcoming sight to, to see how much he's developed oh. just from last season into this season. Big nade to enter on through, though. Effectini stays alive, just goes prone underneath the table. What? <laughs> 18 and 10. Effectini has all of a sudden stolen the spotlight away from Fishity, which is difficult to do, but he just keeps getting fed kills. Someone definitely washed up before dinner because he's feasting at the moment. And with that, Arizona State find themselves over 130. All of the success that the Braves had gotten inside a church has been completely negated. And we reset our rotation back to the first hard point. Fame gets dealt with. And there are more maroon arrows than there are gold ones sitting over this first hill. Existing in the chaos, Arizona State has found a way to do it once again. Back over towards point number one find the next couple of players coming around the corner on the side of the Braves the first two are going to be there fame going to be pushing up noisy there as well two kills going to go it's a one versus one back over towards the point and you got a e2n holding down middle map trying to find effect teeny and maybe a couple of more kills to hold the side of asu maroon off the point but i mean you look at it at the same time fishity goes big for yet another three piece over towards p1 and now allen with 20 oh seconds left you get a ton of points here and now you're behind the Braves with the opportunity not only to get the P2 rotation, but just to keep the side of the Braves across the map. This is, wow. I don't I don't have the lexicon to explain Political. what's happening right now. But we go over to the next hard point at Pillar. E2 in the first one here and good kills surrounding around the outside as Arizona State tries to make a play through Church. That is largely denied. It's Noisy who's watching this backside play. Oh my goodness, he gets <laughs> smoked! And the Effectini Barbecue House is now serving full-on platters of Noisy with a side of Lightning E2N and Fame, and it's not over! It's not over! It's 185 to 119, and I say it's not over, but actually what I should be saying is this map might just be over. <laughs> it's a rolling stone, a snowball. But has consistently gone out of control. Gravity up top almost snaps on the noisy as well. Fame in towards the point. Fishity for the long range shots. And finally, 
with only 15 seconds left. When was the last time you saw Ottawa scrambling and not even being able to rotate necessarily right off the rip just for 20 seconds of time because they were that discombobulated? Bro. Sprack doesn't care. Sprack will find two kills. E2N's gonna be in the back, but guess what? Now the Braves will spawn back across the map and the side of ASU Maroon's gonna have all the bodies in the world there with everybody cleared out and clear P3 control. That is probably game. And look what this rotation, this is what I meant last time that we were here. The Braves are getting too cute. They're trying to go all the way around through command center around the back alley. And once this gets red, you're going to be in another situation where you're stacked up. There's the kills. The spawns are still good. Ah, it, it's just, it seems a bit maddening to keep watching this happen. They're even still trying to hit through mid-map at the moment. Now, granted, the hard point is neutral, but it just feels like all this is taking too long. And when the score is already over 200 points, you don't have time to spare. Arizona State will get broken, but they could just take the leader's advantage, rotate over, and get ready to go for church. Well, you get at least a trade between each other there. So that stalls things out, at least in middle map for the time being. Lightning from the top tries to get up onto gravity, but he gets jumped down upon. And now Fame will spot one from the back. This actually might be great timing. We'll get the trigger discipline on the one. We'll run out the back door, trying to fly all the way out to the right side, but Fishity is all the wiser. We'll be able to pick that up as he flies out to the right side. 50 seconds left on the hill. 40 seconds is all the side of Arizona State need to take map number three. And of course, we will at least see a map number four because we're guaranteed that with a 1-1 stance in the series. But you can bet your bottom dollar that the side of Arizona State with a, with a map win here in map number three are going to be licking their chops and an opportunity to send things to a second best of five if they can get to map number four unscathed here in map number three. Man. What an unbelievable display from Arizona State. Lightning. Nothing there. Noisy doubles up. Needs to get the triple. There it is. Extends the game just a touch longer. And with these kills, he's in a position to actually punish Arizona State for trying to hit Scrap. He earns the glide bomb. He can at least call this out saying, hey, they're starting to hit for the new hard point. So you can turn your guns, get them up, and maybe try to deal with it. 1v1, E2N wins it. And the Braves are in the command center first. Still more threats on the way. E2N tries to zone, and it's Effectini who gets a double, leaving things just down to fame, trying to stay alive, and the nade spam is good enough. Ottawa not done yet as they're clawing their way back into this game. They're inside of the point. 40 seconds left on it. That's all they need to actually tie this game up with the side of Arizona State. I, I didn't like the initial challenge out by Ethan to get a little aggressive. I get you're trying to zone off the rest of the map, but waiting for the rest of your teammates to get there in order to get those trades is big, oh, but Noisy gets a big popcorn two-piece with a frag grenade. And now here comes Sprack on the flank, though. This could be big as the side of Arizona State is now spawned behind Braves as they pushed up the map just a bit too far. Oh, but Ottawa's read this, though, on the rotation. They deal with the scrap time. This is going to put us to a dead even game. Strafing run is still available for Noisy. Are there any glide bombs available? That's the real question. Obviously, Noisy does not have his. He's already used it, but he is going to start to strafe over the hard point. This can keep Arizona State off of it, and maybe you can try to work for kills mid-map, which is exactly what the effort is. Noisy finds one with a strafing run, but Fishity counters with a glide bomb of his own. Noisy up top on four. Shut down! Sprack soaking up potentially the final seconds. Has gravity right behind him as the clock hits the 244. Now it's down to the final attempt, but the numbers are are good and Ottawa extends, but a strafing run to counter keeps things in mostly contest. Ethan, look in the middle map. You got a couple around the corner now trying to fly back over towards the point. You can still win if you're either team on this point number one on the third rotation. Fame looks to the left and towards the church. We'll be able to find one, maybe a costly team kill, but noisily looking out over towards the right side of the tree. Might be able to find the first player for the contest. Second player around the corner. Lightning goes big and finds two, make it three. That's everybody down from the side of Arizona State. Now you're going to fly back to the point. It's going to be a foot race back to it. Three seconds left. You can still win it here. Noisy goes big and finds the last kills Braves will make it a two to one lead with a huge win there a comeback for the ages and a four point victory in map number three. Oh <laughs> my god <laughs> unbelievable stuff from noisy it, it really is all on him it's that play through church which we're cheated out of the next 45 seconds of it really, at that point in time, the game's 230 to 170, and it looks like it's all done. It looks like you could go ahead and just sign the death certificate. We're going into a 2-1 count for Arizona State, but no. Noisy cleans up four straight, 
single-handedly holds off Arizona State from finding any scrap time, and those four wins means that Ottawa can go on rotation to command center. And then he picks up two more on rotation to eventually earn himself that glide bomb plus that strafing run, which was valuable at the end of the game. And for a moment, I know we were both looking at that little play from E2N saying, I get where you're going, but you didn't have the luxury to make the call. But noisy off respawn, double popcorns, fame holds on to the hard point, and that stretch between church and command center. Oh! Oh! Insert more Vanguard into my veins right now, McCormiel. Meal. <laughs> Unbelievable effort from both squads. Unbelievable. Well, here's 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 some things, right? Number one, never count Ottawa out of a map. Number two, Noisy's not going out without a bang in his final series, potentially, <laughs> inside of the CCL. This guy might be graduating soon, but let me tell you, not only is he making noise here for potentially the last time, but this is just a precursor to what we're going to see throughout the rest of the Challengers year. That was fun. Bro. I want Bro. more. <laughs> Bro. Just, you know, I, I will show up and hand Tyler Bailey his certificate myself if he continues to make plays like that. That is an unbelievable display. And the thing about it is, you know, I, I don't mean to just completely hang myself up on, on the noisy train here, but Arizona State played flawless hard point through the first two rotations. It was like 180 to 110 at one point in time. Yeah. I, I, Fish wow. 40. <laughs> Shady drops 40 and, and they lose that map. And, and like, how, and how big was FFTD as well? I mean, massive wow. in so many different ways. There were so many different times where you saw two, three pieces. You saw those big moments that switched the momentum of the game completely. We, we were talking about, all right, let's just chalk this up. And there was times where we're like, all right, yeah, that's the end of the game. They lost it because they lost that rotation there. And, and how many times do we see on the back end, 25 seconds, and that didn't seem necessarily big at the time, but turned and served to be influential all the way at the end from Noisy that allowed the Ottawa roster to be able to come back in that game. That yeah, right I there, mean, chef's kiss. It's four seconds. How many times could we go back over to that entire map and pick out where those difference of four seconds comes from? It's yeah. Wow. That is going to be one. I, I promise you this here, friends that are out there in the CCL world. I'll be going back and looking back over for a while, and I think you, we should all do the same because there are so many awesome moments throughout that map. But we're not done yet. Let's, let's, let's not get ahead of ourselves. I mean, we're already starting to count chickens before they're even laid, let alone hatched. We've got a Berlin hard point coming up next. And, you know, watching Arizona State play this map versus St. Edwards in the lower finals, they were clean. Uh, even sure. in moments where, you know, St. Edwards are making the right plays, we talked a lot about it in the moment, saying that, SEU and the Hilltoppers, they made the right play to break spawns, but they could not hold hard points. Arizona State was re-breaking and retaking hills like none other than we've seen them do in their history through the CCL. But doing that against an Ottawa team that just smacked you down away from a 2-1 map count is going to be one heck of a high hurdle to leap over. I mean, you said it perfectly, but at the same time, I mean... It, it, it... We, we, as much as it's a mental game, you know, physically that drains you. Th those types oh, of close sure. games like that. And, and a lot of people, if you're if you're maybe new to esports or you know you don't watch COD necessarily, you're like, how could it drain you physically? Well, not only is there so much emotion that you're putting into it, but the the actual fact that you're calling out so much and, and you're just sitting there with repetition, you're you're getting drained on a mental state. But the mental state then leads to your physical state, and then that and that in turn basically yep. allows you to just be completely flatlined on a map and it doesn't matter if you might have had the best game of your life if mentally you're just out of it it's a gg from there on out uh, like there's yeah. so many uh, there's so many like examples of times where somebody would just be sitting there and it's like oh we're not winning this map and it could be like a two-point game at some point like that or maybe like a one round of S D. but the second your mental's out of it the second that you physically are unable and not capable anymore to be able to help your team out in any way You've lost the series and you've lost everything in the, in the process. Well, here we go. How do you deal with that sort of a comeback? E2N dismantling the wall in front, but it's Effectini who comes around from behind and gets the double. Great start here for Arizona State and Lightning. I don't think he meant to mantle right there, but it's a full four-man feed. No kills to be found for Ottawa anywhere in the map as the Sun Devils start red hot. We're going to go ahead and hold the rest of the players out from the front doors. Gravity, Nate over the top, is going to actually affect fame just a bit. As noisy hits Sprack, you look to Effectini, who was so good in that last map. Starts this game off on a 5-3. We already have a glide bomb to use here on Berlin. 
hops down in the middle map, looks for a couple more kills. But I mean, Alan, at this point, it seems like every single game, Arizona State has had at least one person start off, not only to the degree where they just are having the hot hand, but they are in a streak in the process. Yeah, that, that's, the, that's the big key. I'm so glad you hit on that because it gives you the opportunity to commit for full time and just invest an early streak. That is not one of those in case of emergency break glass situations. You can drop this early and put this game into a very unstable spot for Ottawa off the rip, which is exactly what we're seeing unfold. Wow. 50 of the first 70 seconds have gone the way of Arizona State. <laughs> and Fishing, he's not done. He's got a double and maybe more in mind and doesn't even need to. Effectini. I have never seen Effectini play this good of COD in the last two years that he's played for Arizona State. What an improvement from him. My goodness. It just looks like there's a chip on the shoulder as well with the way right? they're playing too. It's, it's so nice, but the thing is, it's fluid. Everything that they're doing is it's fluid, and that's the thing that has caught me so off guard just watching them the last couple of days because, you know, early on I was I was sitting there thinking, okay, SEU, they're going to be one of the top three teams to look for. Then ASU beat them a couple of times. I was like, wait a, wait a second, where did this ASU Maroon roster come from? And all of yeah, a sudden they're really. taking maps off of Ottawa, and I'm like, okay, now we got to slow down because this is mentally tripping me out a little bit. And now that, now that we've actually gotten to see them on multiple occasions throughout multiple different maps and modes, I've really started to not only come to love this ASU Maroon roster, but I've seen so many glimpses of hope that this is going to be potentially that Cinderella story of the CC. No! <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, you know what? We're just going to end the point right there. You, you get what let's I'm all, saying. Let's all, let's all back <laughs> away from our monitors a little bit. Take a deep breath. Noisy almost broke Vanguard. Oh. <laughs> Again. But still, with that, <laughs> 60 points down. 14 seconds of free scrap time here. Number five in Fishity looks like he wants to zone the exits, and why not? But the problem is Noisy very well may have very silently put himself in a position to break up this train yard. No, not going to happen. And all of a sudden, Arizona State, a perfect setup as we go over to the train yard. Fishity up top. Could play spoiler here. We'll find the first kill. Looks back potentially for a second. So much elevation on Berlin, specifically in the middle of the map that you can play so shifty. As we're back over towards the train area, you see over towards the left side, Lightning's going to be able to find the second in a row. Gravity comes back to hit one onto Fame, almost snaps back around onto Noisy. But this is kind of the situation we saw ASU Maroon in last time. But now we're going to see on the counteracting portion where St. Edwards was the team that was trying to push in from the offside. Now it's the team <clears throat> of Ottawa who were in the same situation that ASU Maroon were in last time, yeah. where they're holding not only the hard point down, but the spawns at the same time. And so far, we've seen they haven't been really able to do anything except sit on the outside and maybe find a couple of kills. And this is already different from what we saw in the lower finals because Arizona State, they try to get the rebreak, but they're paying some respect here, saying, okay, let's not get a little bit too loose going into this rotation because we definitely want to make sure we're putting ourselves on high ground. We cannot allow the Ottawa Braves to get a look at stringing scrap into initial between four and five. Yep. Good kills coming through, though, for Ottawa, just forcing the peg right into the round hole. And my goodness, this is one heck of a recovery again. And <laughs> let's be honest, these are the last two maps doing this largely without fame's major influence that we saw from his search and destroy. Yep. That, that's the other big thing to kind of keep in the back of your mind as we inch towards potentially a tight game through the first rotation, which is astonishing to say out loud considering that at one point in time we were talking about Arizona State winning the first 50 of the first 70 seconds of the map. Well, and the, th and the crazy thing is, and of course, as you say, it, Fame goes ahead and gets a three-piece and gets himself back into the game just a bit. It's one of those situations where, you know, everybody's being able to run around the map with their MP40s and the submachine guns without their AR, or rather their main AR, really forcing the agenda or getting any presence or pressure on the map. Usually you'd have to wait for your main AR to be able to get a couple of kills in order for yeah. your subs to be able to push up the map. But I mean, this is one of those games where early on we've seen the SMGs be very, very powerful. And they don't even really, I mean, of course they need fame, but they don't really need fame to hold down those angles like a main AR normally would. I don't get any position on the map. And well, they've already brought it back to a six point game and they're about to take the lead here. Uh, you know, last time it was like heroics down towards the end of the game. And they've already overcome like a 90 point lead already, which is yeah. just ridiculous. You two in on three, 30 seconds to play for Arizona State. They have to try to break through this. There, there's really no other option. You don't want to forfeit this to just be free soaked up by the Braves. So here comes the push. Stun's already in and the kill's clean. 
Last player left is noisy. He may just be enough. There's two, three. How about number four? Not going to be needed because that player already died. Good awareness there, Shift. But with that, it's a single-handed <laughs> break from the Ottawa Braves on the backside of noisy. And with those wins, Arizona State is essentially spawn-trapped as they try their hardest to work with any ground available to get over to the third hill and sprack. Yeah, well, he found it. As he gets himself the three, that'll be good for Arizona State to get back into the mail room first. Probably looking out the window. Stun check going to be able to find one, but Lightning gets the best of him. He's trying to throw that frag out the window. Sprack looking over towards the left is going to be able to take down Ethan in the process. And you just can't say enough good about what Sprack, Epictini, Gravity, Fishity have done throughout the entirety of this. But oh, there goes Noisy again. Pops a two-piece and now is on a five spree and has a glad bomb to work with. But Sprack meeting and exceeding those margins. Gets a catch on the free fire coming around the back. And ooh, a little dicey game of tag going on here. But Epictini will eventually deal with fame. So Arizona State... Scrap time should be good, but just what like Arizona had to do in the last rotation, Ottawa has to do here. Cut through old, make your way across the map. They've done part one of this two-step process. Now they're working to make their way through FXTD, who's the next line of defense here. Noisy going to commit the glide bomb. Could very well find one, and it is. It's Fishity, who was very far forward. So now all of a sudden, Arizona State are trapped inside this back building as we open up the hard point in the lobby. Noisy around the top. Not going to find the kill, and it will turn into an open doorway, though, and as he makes his way in, there's another elimination on three. How about four? Oh, my goodness. Noisy nearly gets the full snapper onto Gravity, who keeps his life and wants more than that. Kind of dances inside the doorway, but not going to be able to get too cute with it, and Ottawa successfully break. How many times are we going to have to sit there and just wait for Noisy to break into a hill and just find, like, three kills and just, like, hope and pray, like, uh, on everything that, like, he either A, does or doesn't get that, like, final kill to where, like, we're just going to just be so incredibly blown away that just mouth agape the entire time? Well, How I mean, many times? the game has been out for 16 days. We've got another 348, <laughs> so I think at least that many days we have to consider that potential opportunity. <laughs> Uh, it's been incredible to watch so far, but Arizona State, they've regained the lead, and as I say that, it's going to be the Braves roster who goes ahead and swaps that once again. Lightning, 15 and 17, will call in the streak. Actually, it's going to be Sprack who calls in the streak on the other side for Arizona State, looking to find one in Will. It's going to be three down, and as they now try to switch their position and get in towards the hill once again, trying to get back into the lead in this game. Such a heavy, contested hill, if you can get around it, but once you go ahead and hold on to those spawns, it can be relatively unbreakable. And that's exactly what we're seeing here right now. They've had such a good hold against St. Edwards when they were playing from the spawn side, and they're trying to do that once again here against Ottawa. Yeah, Sprack just holding on to a, oh my goodness, any kind of train rail possible to keep him some cover, but Fame locks things up. Ottawa successfully break the hard point and the spawns in the same effort. Eight seconds left, though. Marginal time. Puts us to essentially a dead even 197 to 199. Looking at rotation. Lightning. One minute and nearly 30 seconds inside the hard point and doing work around the OBJ before the hill opens. Two kills for him. Noisy follows up. And my goodness, it's just any weapon, every weapon. Give him a stone to throw. He'll find a way to make a kill. There is his second automaton in hand. And as the hard point has opened up, it's all gold so far on the kill feed and in the middle of the map. Well, we lost Checkmate. We lost Noisy Airlines in the process. But now we play on Berlin where there's tons of trains. So why don't we just give Noisy an entire train station to run through because that's exactly what he's done here in map number four, trying to close out this best of five series. Again, this is a $1,500 game of Call of Duty. And if ASU Maroon is able to force it to a second best of five, then, of course, that will finally determine a winner in that series. But right now, it's not looking like they're going to be able to do that. However, Ottawa at 222, 208 for ASU Maroon. This is still anybody's game here down to the wire. Yeah, Don't get is. me wrong. So as they start to push into the building now with about 20 seconds left to win the game, Arizona State have the rotations in their hands. E2N able to pick up on a trade from Noisy, who got far forward. Lightning shut down by Sprack. Not able to lock down the pre-fire for E2N. So Ottawa in the hard point first as office opens up. 
spawns from the back side. This is definitely a hard point you can hold from the front. And you're starting to see those spam shots from Fane. Very well may do it. He's going to look for his seventh straight kill. Slow to start, but hot to finish. 245. The last push for Arizona State. Going to be largely negated by Fame himself. What a chance to come out, but an unfortunate team kill. Kills off also the last chance for Arizona State to extend the map. And Ottawa, still champions no matter what game, what title, what year, what day, what month. 252-10 here for a 3-1 to one win. They will be your CCL Vanguard Open champs. Noisy, Lightning, Ethan, Fame come into this. The favorites, well, once again, they prove exactly why they're the favorites. Noisy, an incredible send-off, an incredible way to end his CCL career. And again, we said it was bittersweet beforehand, but it's just hits a little bit harder now that everything is over, and we know that that was the final series. But again, what a way to end it. Incredible Heroics was playing out of his mind throughout the entirety of the series. And really, in the S&D was the only time that maybe he fell off just a little bit and had to take a backseat to the everlasting <laughs> fame who dropped 17 yeah. kills. But inside of the hard points, there was really nobody that could match Noisy except maybe Fishity and Effectini on the other team in terms of the slaying. So, uh, incredible way to not only go out here from the CCO, but uh, we kind of look back on what was an abnormally disgusting time that he spent inside of the CCL where he not only made a lot of people smile but at the same time uh, made a lot of people not only recognize who he was but leave a legacy behind that Ottawa is going to continue to fulfill going forward it's you know <laughs> this is a very strange metaphor so deal with me watching noisy <laughs> play in the CCL is like going to a restaurant and ordering your dessert first it's real sweet. It's you. You love it. You, you love that you're starting off the year like that. But let's be honest. The main course is still to come for Noisy's career. Uh, sure. Also, the appetizer, the soup and salad course as well. So a lot to go forward on that metaphor. But regardless, it's still Ottawa on top. Let's take a look back over this grand final series because it started off and continued to be throughout the entirety of it a very tight series. We talked about that in the winners' finals. Arizona able to keep things tight through three maps, but were not able to successfully capitalize on any of those tight instances but here for the sun devils the forks were up early as bakaj went their way 250 to 209 fame as you mentioned took over in the tuscan search and destroy never really allowing a chance for arizona state to get their way back into the map even though it did go 10 rounds 252 46 and an unbelievable comeback largely from the <laughs> loud boy himself 252 46 all of that coming down to the last three hard points and then here arizona state trying to muster together a comeback of their own own, but just simply put not able to do so off the final two hard points no need for the because search braves still on top and with that a major congratulations once more to the ottawa university braves without their sister school here mccormium we thought maybe huh i don't know if anyone's gonna touch them they were you know at least battled up against here from a couple of different squads but still champions at the end well, looks can be deceiving, and although it was a 3-1 series, it was extremely close all the way down to the wire, but it, you can't really understate what side of Ottawa was able to not only bring to the table, but eventually go ahead and complete with a 3-1 to one victory. But again, congratulations to the side of Ottawa. They'll be taking home the first place prize of $1,500, second place prize going to Arizona State with $700, and then of course the third place prize is St. Edwards, and that rounds out our top three with the $250 split yep. of the prize pool. But it's been a fun time, not only today, but yesterday watching all the Swiss bracket happen, and then of course finding ourselves in the top eight championship double elimination bracket. This has been an awesome time being able to showcase yes. and spectate over what we're going to be able to see, not only throughout the entirety of the Vanguard year, but just see the new challengers, the up-and-coming rosters, and more importantly, the redefined shape of this Arizona State University Maroon roster that is going to be one to watch out for through the entire year. Look, this is an ASU squad that just put up a heck of a fight versus four players that I would anticipate will find themselves in the top 16 week after week in challengers yeah there is so much promise and presence from this arizona state roster i would love to see how they could if they do decide to compete in challenge individually or collectively in some form there's a lot of promise across the board from a number of different rosters st edwards of course we expect to see some of those players for sure playing in challengers but for a squad that 
we haven't really seen any of these players find much success outside of the CCL. And it, it, I don't even say outside. I don't mean to come off this BM here, but they weren't really finding a lot of success in the CCL either. No. Put yourself together. Find yourself a solid roster. Seems to be a game that you enjoy. Keep at it. Keep working at it. And there is an opportunity not just to do well in the CCL, but I think there is a lot of challengers potential on that roster too. So I'm, I'm excited just like you are, I think, to see how far the Sun Devils team goes. Yeah, absolutely. It's one of those things to where, you know, you, you spectate and you speculate all, all throughout the year of who's going to be the good teams going into the next season. And, you know, we saw a lot of great things at the tail end of Cold War when we had the Mutineers CCL open. We had the Summer yeah. 8s. We also had the... Uh, the summer open and all those were great events and it showcased a lot of new schools that are coming up into it and of course like you had some teams that missed out on the actual top eight portion of the bracket like for example florida gulf coast university yeah. who were three points in hard point away from qualifying for the top eight portion of the bracket which is mind-blowing to me that they had three they were three points away from being able to compete inside of the double elimination bracket so again there, there's so many not only teams that we're going to see here but teams that we haven't even been able to to see just yet who are probably going to be there for the signups when the actual Great. CCL season rolls around. So sure, we get our, our first sneak peek and a little glimpse into some of these teams, but some of the rosters that are still forming in the background, well, we'll just have to wait and see what they bring in the actual CCL season for the Vanguard year. It's going to be a fun year, and this is just the first taste. We can go on and do CCL after dark after this to keep talking about this for hours, <laughs> but we'll let you get over and finish off your weekend however you so see fit to do so. It's been a lot of fun. It's been McCormiel, but I hold chip. Of course, you had, Cor you had Colin and uh, Jesse earlier on the day, Proper and Tiff over in the Bravo stream. Got a lot more CCL action to come here in partnership with EFU, so make sure you're following along with everything, including the Twitch, the socials, the Discord, everything. Just go follow it all. Follow everything you could possibly find College Cod related. And until next time there, friends, and we see you for holiday things, I think, is the next thing up. Make sure you stay tuned for those announcements. But until that point, hope you keep holding it down. So long.